Hey, I'm Francis. And I'm Reverend Zach. And welcome to This Movie is a Hot Dog, a podcast where me and my brother, Reverend Zach, over there, watch a bad movie critically, financially, or otherwise, then review it, break it down, and tell you what we think. And this week, we watched Roadhouse. Uh, yeah, this one, 1989 American action thriller film directed by Rowdy Harrington, one of my favorites, of course, and starring Patrick Swayze, Kelly Lynch, Sam Elliott, and Ben Gazzara. Yeah, so... What did you think of this movie uh, at a first glance? I well, but there's a reason that you're hosting this and I'm not hosting this. I just want to say one. this is under duress before we even start. <laughs> I don't like doing the whole hosting thing. I'm more of a color commentator. You guys know that. You're, you're doing a great job already, man. Oh my god. Uh, I I straight up I love this movie. I absolutely love it. Between the ages of 15 and 17, this was an incredibly influential movie in my life. And for me, I I had never seen it. Uh, I picked I picked this one, right? Yeah, I picked yes, this one picked this because one. I saw it on a bad movie list, and I brought it up to Reverend Zach, and he was like, yeah, let's watch it. And then I watched it, and I was like, I don't know. This movie might not even be a hot dog. I guess we'll find that out here soon enough. Oh. This was a movie that when I would come home from high school, this w- immediately come home, go into my bedroom to hide from our parents. Uh, I would I would put this in my PlayStation Two. Oh, wow. On my tiny little nine inch. I remember that thing. TV. That thing was little. Was on the tiniest TV in the world, cost me a hundred and twenty dollars, oh. <laughs> and I would just like for I don't know months. Every other day, I would just put it on in the background. I probably have seen this movie at least 60 times. That's insane. I mean, it's it's okay, but... Yeah, well, I mean, I mean I, no, it's cheesy, and it's goofy, but I love it. Yeah. It, it, it. Like, it's so great. And, and for this reason, I could not in good conscience host the show, because <laughs> I, love, I love this movie. And this this thing actually did well in the theaters. I mean, it, yeah, the budget I mean, of $15 it, the, million, it made 30 so it doubled up. I mean, it wasn't a hit. No, but, but it made money. It made money. Yeah, that's, yeah. That it wasn't bad. It's played on TV a lot, and it's, oh uh, yeah, because it's definitely which is, got a little cult following to it. Well, it's funny to me that this is on TV as often as it is, be, uh, for as much nudity and cursing as there is. Yeah, how, I've never seen. Do they cut it out a lot? Like a lot of the stuff out? Like what? How much of the movie I've, is cut? I wonder. I've never, I've never seen it on TV. Oh, you had it? Did you have it on VHS or DVD? DVD. DVD. Oh, he said PlayStation. Yeah, so. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess we should get into the movie. I'm sure I'll mess this up, but let's go at it. So we start the movie in a uh, a bar. There's like a big concert, and everyone's having a good time. We immediately see Patrick Swayze. Um, what was his character's name again? I just kept calling Dal- him. Was it? Dalton. Dalton. I kept, called, kept having him call him. I kept calling him Patrick Swayze in my brain. Um, all I could think of was Dirty Dancing. <laughs> <laughs> His hair in this movie, by the way, is the most beautiful quaffed head of hair I've ever seen on a man. He looks gorgeous. Even if he's killing people. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> well, he doesn't kill people till later. Yeah, but it's still. Um, and there's like a big drunken fight, and he goes over, and I guess he's a bouncer, and he capes, he, he, he breaks up the fight and like throws the, the guy out. And they're like, oh, we're going to fight you. And he's like, he's like, nope. And then just walks back in. He's like, oh, I am cool and collected. I don't need to fight. <laughs> He did get his arm cut, though. He did get his arm. Yeah, I have that right. Yeah, he gets knifed, uh, and uh, he doesn't go. But he doesn't need to go to. He's too much. To, he's too big to go to the hospital at this point. He just he's, throws himself. He's up. too damn cool. He is. He is actually quite the suave fellow. He's just so fucking cool. <laughs> he's he's so fucking cool. <laughs> he's gonna sew up his own wound. Rambo did it first, I believe, though. <laughs> Ever? I don't know. I'm just saying that's like that's like the first movie I remember where someone sews their wound. Fair enough. Oh boy. He after that he, he what is the this guy like walks into the room and is like, "Hey, um, I own a I just came into some money. I own a bar now. Can you come help me clean that up because it's kind of rough around there." Yeah, this is Kevin Tige or Teague. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. He plays this character uh Frank Tillman. Yes. He's actually I can't for the life of me name another thing that I've seen him in, but I've seen him in a lot of he stuff. He in RoboCop? A... No, I don't no? think so. Okay, I thought I thought he was like one of the bad guys in RoboCop for some reason. No, I, no. 
No, I don't think he is. But yeah, he's basically just trying to hire Dalton to do what he does for his bar. Right. Yeah. He's got. I guess he's got this place in a nice, nice way, and he's like, "Hey, I want, I want what you have." So, and he's like, "Yeah," and he he rattles off some amount of money he wants, and the guy's like, "Sure, no problem." He goes, "Does he he get? Does he end up giving his? Do think he gives his car to like someone on the street or something like that?" Well, because as we'll find out later in the movie, because Dalton is so smart and such a great man, he always has a junker car mm-hmm. that he takes to work in case people uh, destroy it because they have issues with him. Yes. So he gives his junker car to a homeless person, and then he takes the the cover off of his Mercedes, and it's got a tape deck in it. Yeah, it's a, and he puts like a big white tape into it. <laughs> and the 80s, rock and 80s music comes on. <laughs> yeah, it's, re- it's real rocking. Hey, I liked the music in this movie. Oh, the music, it's a great movie. Everything's great about it. Uh, so he, you know, by the way, I noticed also like during this whole part, the credits are still rolling. <laughs> like yeah, five minutes in, I'm like, about really? Fifteen minutes of credits. I'm like, are you kidding me? So, anyways, he he ends up in this new place, and the name of this bar is the Double Deuce, and it's a real roadhouse. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a little violent. I wrote that here. It's a little violent. It is a little violent. Yeah, yeah it's it's violent. Everyone's just fighting. There's people are. The the, the 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 people that work there are are crooked as well. They're... Well, I, I, it, it, they show so much in this first scene. It's so great. So the music, most of the music in this movie is played by the band in the bar. It, it's uh, the Jeff Healy band with the lead singer Jeff Healy, who is a blind guy. And I only bring that up. That's only worth mentioning because. Uh, the band is behind chicken wire because people are constantly throwing glass bottles at this blind man. <laughs> like, just, and they like the music, though. They're like, great, you're playing music. You know what, but the, you know what it reminds me of? Blues Brothers. <laughs> yeah, but it's not played for, like, I don't know, is it played for yucks? I think is this it's supposed, supposed to be funny? Be, yeah. Is it? I don't think it's supposed to be funny. I think it's supposed to be like, wow, this is a real roadhouse situation we got going on. Oh, I thought on. it was hilarious. <laughs> oh yeah, well, like, fuck you, blind guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, he won't give me if he gets it in his eye. It won't matter. So people are people are selling drugs and getting in fights. Yeah, and he's just and you know he comes in and he um you know Swayze comes in and he's just he's just looking the place over to see what he's got to deal with you know he doesn't say a word to anybody right. and, just, and that bothers some of them they're like who's this guy you know <laughs> what's he doing well what I, what I love about this bar too is did you notice the women what about like, him, what the big hair and stuff well not only the big hair I mean there are like drunk guys who are half naked there are people stabbing each other with throwing throwing bottles at a blind man. And then there are these group of women who are in like these skin tight cocktail dresses, like all made up face, like, like decked out to the nines. Like these women would not be in this place. Yeah, Why why did you get all dressed up to come to a place like this? The floor has blood and broken glass all over it. Like they're in like, fuck me pumps. Like (laughs) they they do not belong there. (laughs) It's very true, yeah. I, I, I mean, I just noticed, and, and again, everything super eighties. <laughs> and uh, we, and you see Kevin uh, t- uh, Tig because he owns the place, and he's uh, trying to straighten the place up the best he can. How does he fix some of the wall graffiti? Yeah, I guess you just have to paint over that. Or... <laughs> no, no, no. What is? Oh, he do that's the... right. One of the toilet areas says, um, for was it for a great fuck? Does it say or for a great fuck? Call blah, blah, phone blah, number. Blah. Phone yeah. number. Yeah, and he puts for a great Buick. He changes like the lettering to make it say Buick. Like what? Why would, what is that gonna do? <laughs> yeah, just and of course it's like, oh look, there's only nine hundred other graffiti parts, you know, things on this wall. <laughs> He's like, just change that one thing. Not only that, I want to hear that phone call where it's like, hey, hey uh, you got a Buick? I, or... I hear you're trying to get rid of a Buick. <laughs> and like, no. <laughs> I think you got the wrong number. I'm no, no, no. I'm the guy who fucks people. Yeah. So I, I don't have a car. I'm. <laughs> you can fuck me though. I, I, and then he goes up. It looks like the. Well, it not looks like it is that uh, Swayze knows the blind singer. Jeff Healy. Yeah, uh, he's the blind singer. He goes up and talks to him, and uh, you know he's like, "Hey, what's the inside scoop here?" And they kind of have a little exchange. But then it kind of goes around that a lot of people know. Dalton's name like everybody yeah, like, like he's 
he's well, and like everyone's like Dalton. Oh, I thought he would be bigger. That was like the big line. <laughs> I thought because he's so he's so fucking cool. <laughs> Everybody cool. knows who he is. He's radical. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then it's like this one guy once is like basically selling his girlfriend's boobs to be kissed. That's the best I, thing. I've I've seen this movie at least sixty times. right? Yeah, I still don't know what's happening here. Yeah, well, this guy's so, like, you can kiss my girlfriend's boobs for twenty dollars. Well, <laughs> it's, so it's a big, it's a big weird like. <laughs> also, everybody in this movie's a cartoon character. <laughs> like, everybody's like, hey, buddy, you want to come feel my wife's boobs? And he's. Like, for twenty dollars, and he's like, "Yeah, sure." And he goes over there, and he starts like really manhandling them. Yeah. Like he's mushing these things around. And the guy's like, like uh, "Are you gonna kiss him or what?" And he's like, "Nope, because I don't got twenty dollars." <laughs> I don't know. He goes, "I don't even have twenty dollars." <laughs> and that starts an all-out brawl from everyone. Everyone. It's like, just like one guy gets shoved. It's like a cartoon again, a cartoon scene or like some old western that is, you know. And it, and like every well, this is this is what happens when you let stuntmen do their own acting. Oh man! <laughs> because there's like a guy guy sitting at the bar watching the fight, and he's just like bouncing up and down, going, <laughs> 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 and then he gets hit in the head with a bottle, and then this guy gets hit in the head with a bottle, and somebody's like, "Dim's fighting words." <laughs> I also <laughs> noticed out of this? nowhere that there is um, one of the people that works there is a uh, pretty famous wrestler. <laughs> Which one? Uh, Terry Funk. He, he's one of the guys that gets fired a little later. A little later or, or right away? Right after is he this, the guy, yeah. Is he, like, is he the curly-haired curly guy? Curly-black-haired guy, okay. yep. Okay, yeah. yeah. He's, a very, he's a pretty wrestler. famous wrestler, yep. Huh. He's retired now, but at the time, yeah, he was, yeah, he was up Oh, there. to add to the cast of the bar, uh, the giant, because it's the 80s, we got a big comical fat guy... <laughs> yeah, he's... that that big comical fat guy is the same big comical fat guy from Cheerleader Camp. Hey, <laughs> it's and all I could think is while I'm watching this is like I am very familiar with what your ass looks like. <laughs> <laughs> that was so gross, man. Because I'm like I know I know exactly what your ass looks like. I became very uh... me and your ass have a lot of background, and now you're in this movie. <laughs> so they have a big fight. Now, I, and uh, for the life of me, I can't remember how it gets resolved. <laughs> this, this, it just ends. Yeah, it's just, like, <laughs> it, it just fades out, and that's it. It just ends. Yeah, because Swayze is still, or Dalton, excuse me, is still like, I'm still checking everything out. I don't want to get involved, you know? He's just checking it out. Yeah, this movie is just insane. Right? I mean, at this point, I'm like, what is just happening? Why? Oh, and this fight goes on for like five Yeah, minutes. that's why I was like, why? Is... I mean, wow. They are, they really trying to uh, play up how insane this bar is. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and that's part of its appeal and charm is because they're like, look how bad this place is. It is like watching a car, like a comic book or a cartoon. I almost burped and then I did Okay over there. <laughs> I'm good. All right, I'm just wanted to make sure. So, yeah. So Swayze then goes to buy a junk car in this town. Did you want me to host then... it or you got it? Oh, excuse the uh, when, fuck out of me. When I mess up, I'll make sure you step in. Okay, please okay. go. Yeah, so uh, Swayze goes to buy a car. He wants a piece of crap like so he can drive to work in that every day instead, and we'll find out uh, very soon why. Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> what What's the matter with you? <laughs> Nothing. I just love how you really punctuated. You really punctuated that point. And uh, yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah, that's so he <laughs> Swayze then <laughs> ends up renting a room uh, on an old farm. I'd say he's going to be in the upstairs of a barn house from a guy who looks like an old prospector. <laughs> he's this guy's also a cartoon character. <laughs> Even later on, his pajamas have the little poop flap. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Oh, this guy just looks like there's gold in them hills. <laughs> Can't even, man. How do you how do you even host this with me? <laughs> how do I host this with you? Uh, it's chores sometimes. All right. So he they're standing there and this helicopter comes and like does a brush by of uh, the farmhouse and the, the the farmer prospector guy's like, Hey, he does it all the time. I think he just does it on purpose, you know. He basically goes, see that guy up there? That's the bad guy of the movie. Yeah, yeah. We just, yeah exactly. He's like, what a jerk. 
<laughs> that's a Ben Gazzara. He plays Brad Wesley. He'll be your antagonist for the next ninety minutes. <laughs> now, what what other films is the um is the antagonist in? Like everything. Yeah, I've ben seen him. Gar- is he ben in, G- I thought I think he was in Naked Gun. Dude, it's been a while since I've seen Naked Gun. I think Gun. he's the bad guy in Naked Gun. Yeah. So. I don't think so. But I really I like that movie too. That's a bad <laughs> movie as well. Uh anyways. <laughs> no, that, no it's not. It's a parody movie. Yeah, it goes a little far, don't you think? That's kind of the point of the movie. So, we go back to the bar, and the Swayze's like, you know what? I'm going to fire the people that are not... Uh... The Swayze? <laughs> the Swayze, yeah. The Swayze? <laughs> he ends up firing a bunch of people. He does. He, like, he's like, okay, you're too rowdy. No customers will like you. And and of course, like, and the and the people that are fired are like, oh, you're going to pay for this with your life. And it's like, wow, that's a bit much. Jeez. <laughs> Not only that, it's like, do you really want to work here that bad, though? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not really that great of a gig. Right. So business, they open for business that night, and uh, the Swayze, he also notices um, a lot of crooked business going on, like drug dealing from the employees, and one guy is uh, taken from the till. Taken from the till, the bartender skimming from the top. Yep. This other guy lets in underage girls so he can fuck them in the back. Yep, yeah. And uh, we see boobs again, so we're, the boob count keeps going up, but we also see him completely naked. Yeah, that was a little much. Like, this is an equal opportunity nude movie, because it's not just like, oh, it's girls' boobs. It's like, you see, like, five guys' asses, part of their pubes, sometimes just their dick. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, I, I, you're, you're right about that. I was, I was not expecting that. This movie has something for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> equal opportunity nudity. Then there's a fight over something. I guess I missed why the Swayze is like just beating the the crap out of somebody. I think it's just another rowdy fight. Yeah. I don't remember. Maybe that's why I missed it. And then he fires uh, two more people. For of course, the bartender and the guy that was uh, letting in the girls. Who was naked? Yeah, and then was having sex on the shift. But he does right. claim... With, a, with an underage girl. Right. Well, he so did claim that he was right. on his break, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> did he clock out yeah, and write in having deal. sex in broom closet? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, man. I think I forgot what happened here. <laughs> he's back at the farm. Somebody comes where... to see him. No, well, th- before this, he's he's reading uh, he's reading a book and he looks across the river because on the other side of this old farm he's living on is the bad guy in a mansion, and so that, <laughs> in a giant like a like a like a uh, what a Richie Rich style mansion like it's too big for one dude to be living there. <laughs> Oh, he's got and, all his, his his goons. I don't know if they live there, too. I'm not sure. They seem like they do, but he's throwing a big booby-filled pool party. Yes, yeah, and he's like, oh, gosh. But the the waitress comes to see the Swayze. The waitress, yeah. The waitress. <laughs> waitress, <laughs> pardon me. Yeah, she comes to see him on the farm and talks to him about some stuff. and then Stares at his butt very lustfully. We get some Swayze buns. I was going to try to leave that part out. Why? Uh, I don't want it to be equal opportunity. What? <laughs> what do you want? Uh, one-sided. Oh man, this was a bad idea. So, oh my God, why? All right. So the next scene, I believe it's the bad guy is just driving erratically. For uh, yeah, for, he's because just he feels so, like it. He's just so rich and powerful that he drives. In both lanes, just sw- swerving in between lanes. And if he almost kills the Sways. He almost kills the Sways. Because he's like, brr, brr, don't care if anyone dies. And, yeah, so, yeah, he almost kills him. And, of course, you know, Patrick Swayze's just like, ugh, what a jerk. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Yeah, so he, I think the Sways goes to the repair guy, the, the car repair dude. Red's Auto Body Shop, and I will take a minute to say this guy who play who is his name is Red Webster, and he was part of Elvis's Memphis Mafia. And not only has he been in a bunch of movies, but he's also been people have played him as his real person in Elvis films, which I thought was interesting. Oh, well, that's an interesting fact. It is. Yeah. So he's talking because I believe they've been so now already they're people after, during his shift they're they're. Destroying his car. 
mm-hmm. like flattening his tires, bare breaking the window, and they're, he's like, you know, you might as well buy another car. You know, he's like, eh, no, just just fix it up. <laughs> he's like, you might as well keep a running tab. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I believe one of the bad guy, like, goons shows up. Not even bad guy goons. The bad guy. Ben Gazzara shows up to to extort money from this guy, like protection money. He's kind of running a little rinky-dink mob in this Kansas town. Right, yeah, he's got control of, like, every business. Yeah, so, yeah. Then Patrick Swayze does topless Tai Chi by the river. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's some kind of karate dude now. Well, not now. He's always been a karate dude. Has he really? Yeah, he's a he's a cool party dude too. Oh, okay. I he's thought, just, I, Patrick Swayze is just so fucking cool. I just put he's a he's a chi karate master now. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So I'm falling off the tracks here. <laughs> okay, so then at the double deuce, several of Ben Gazzara's guys show up and threaten to kill slash run Dalton out of town. These bad guys also have a comically overweight guy too. So this movie's doubling down on our funny, our funny fat guys. He's always got red suspenders on. He's just kind of silly. That's right. Uh, yeah, and I believe they're trying to fight him. They're trying to like basically get rid of Dalton. Yeah, I literally just said that. Yeah. Well, I just uh, wanted Pat- to double down. <laughs> All right. So Patrick <laughs> Swayze dispatches them, but he gets cut. Yeah. So again. he goes to he goes to the hospital to get staples for his wound. And the doctor is played by Kelly Lynch, who was in who was the doctor in Virtuosity. Yeah. So he goes there, they have a talk about, oh, you got quite a record here. Am I hosting it again? Is that what happened? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I mean I think I fell off the rails. I'm sorry about that. Okay, that's fine. Uh so they have a discussion about how like, oh, you, you got a lot of cuts and bruises and stitches and he goes, Pain don't hurt <laughs> <laughs> His, his, one of his famous lines from this movie, Pain Don't Hurt. Uh, they flirt, and they're like, oh, maybe I'll see you around. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Uh, ben Gazzara lectures his henchmen for failing. Uh, let's also note that his henchmen drive around in a giant uh, monster truck. Yeah, I, don't know. I didn't quite understand that, you know, so. Be- because he's so evil, I guess. Yeah, but he, this isn't representing him. They're the goons, you know. I don't know. Hey, people like monster trucks, man. It's Kansas. <laughs> so Swayze goes back to Red's auto body shop and sees some of the goons have trashed the place for money. So we're just sort of building that these guys are bad. Swayze then realizes maybe he's getting in a little over his head here. And he calls the guy who taught him everything he knows, Sam Elliott. A mustacheless Sam Elliott, by the way. Yeah. And I just want to say, Sam Elliott is awesome. It's just like everything he's he does on- is just pure you th- If you did if. Just when you thought this movie couldn't get any better, when you're like, this is the best movie in the world, surely this this is, this should be in everyone's home. And then Sam Elliott comes and you're like, oh my god, it got better somehow. <laughs> Although he calls him and it almost seems like there's no point to it. Not really. Like the phone call is pretty, like not, no information is exchanged, but the movie then later tells us that he can't, he comes there to help Dalton. Even though that's not said in this phone call at all. Yeah, maybe that scene was deleted or something, or the line was deleted. I guess. So the double deuce is now a little better. The chicken wire is gone from the stage, and it's slightly cleaner. And they have a nice, still have, do they still have the, the background? Is the background nice yet? Did they put the... um? Not not the, quite yeah, yet. Uh, right. it, it's getting better, but another group of four goons come in and try to kill him for the third time. <laughs> Uh, this time they have knives attached to their boots, <laughs> and uh, uh, they just get the shit kicked out of them. Yes, yeah, Swayze and the comically fat guy, the good one, not the bad comically <laughs> right. fat guy, uh, beat all of these dudes up. Just as Kelly Lynch walks up wearing what appears to be a tablecloth from an Italian restaurant, say, she's wearing like it's like a checkerboard Italian restaurant tablecloth white, that yeah. she has somehow turned into a dress. Yeah. <laughs> And has teased her hair like crazy. Her hair is only rivaled by Patrick Swayze's hair. <laughs> She's got very big hair. So they both go to a diner and talk about life and stuff. Uh, she takes him back to his car and then they kiss because now they're going to be in love or whatever. Back at the farm, the goons show up and they take Swayze, the Swayze, as you have dubbed him, to Ben Gazzara who wants to meet him. He basically just, Ben Gazzara just tells Swayze, like, he wants to run him out of town. He is the only reason that this town exists. He's like, I bought Sierra and Roebuck here. That bar only exists because I let it exist. 
I'm cartoonishly evil. <laughs> <laughs> what? And then it's like, and doesn't he try to say like, how much would it cost for me to hire you to clean up a bar? Oh yeah, he wants him to be. He wants him to work for him because Swayze's the best. He is. Yeah, and he's. I mean, obviously his goons aren't getting it done. <laughs> So then the next night, and I'm assuming that this is, takes place over weeks or months because it appears to be the third night and this place now looks like an Applebee's. <laughs> they've, they've cleaned it up so much that they've gone too far and now it looks like a TGI Friday's. <laughs> like, all the bouncers are wearing, like, these, like... The red shirt. They, yeah, the nice, they look yeah. like they're waiters. Yeah, they, they got nice these, uniforms. like, red polos on. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, and it's just, yeah, it's turned into, and what, how long is this supposed to be in the movie? They make it seem like it's two to three days. Yeah, but it can't be. No, like, it would exactly. Be. It's, this is like a month, you know? So Kelly Lynch picks him up and takes him home, and then they have some super steamy, sexy sex. Yeah. He's like fucking her on a wall, and then he's holding her in his arms, and then they're all naked, and we're seeing butts and boobs, and who knows what else is in this scene. Uh, frankly, I couldn't keep my eyes off it. And then I love that they just go out on the roof. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then they have a post-coital stare at the sun while we stare at the stars, which I guess is staring at a sun. While they lay on this hot tin roof. And, and the bad guy is watching them. <laughs> He's sitting in his rocking chair across the river, watching them then, because then they start having sex again. Yeah. <laughs> they have sex on the roof of this house. Uh, and he's and just, yeah. is just watching. Just to piss him off. <laughs> I don't think I know. Is that what I know. Is that why he's doing it? I don't think so, but it's just funny. You know, it's very much like I am the evil man in my in my rocking chair. I can't Do believe think... they're doing this without my permission. <laughs> Do you think that's what Swayze was doing? He's like, that's how he talked her into it. He's like, you know, if you have sex with me again, it would really piss him off. I bet. No, I didn't say that. I'm just saying, you know. I know. I said that as a joke. Oh. Anyway, back at work, some thugs are there to destroy the alcohol shipment. I love this scene because, like, two, three guys start ganging up on Swayze as he tries to stop them, and one guy is just picking up cases of beer and throwing them on the ground. Yeah, why don't they just take them? <laughs> or just, like, fucking kill this guy yeah, already. it would have been like, over, you know? <laughs> like, they're like, this is literally the fifth time that they've sent, like, a group of thugs to go fight him. <laughs> They always lose, and it's always the same guys. Yep. It's not like, all right, it's time to upgrade our staff and send our Taekwondo master. Yeah, no, well, he's there. He's just not, they just leave him behind. <laughs> and they don't, and it's just like, if, if okay, if this is what we're doing and we're really supposed to be escalating it, or if we really want to do it, just fucking shoot him already. Yeah, what if this, this movie could have been over 20 minutes in. The bad guys could have won if they're just like, hey, Dalton, can I talk to you for a Ooh, minute? Blammo! <laughs> All right, there we go. Bar is now right, crap the, again, and we win. The, the bar is now crap again. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Sam Elliott shows up. He is so and badass. He helps, he's so fucking cool. <laughs> and he, be, he beats up all these guys. And he then beats uh, him up. Him he, and, sh he punches one guy straight in the nuts. And he and he does that thing where he palms the guy right in the nose and, like, breaks his nose. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just and awesome. Then, uh, <laughs> And then uh, they had they slap arms together like in pred like Dylan, and they're, now their power between the coolness factor between both of their hands. I'm surprised the film didn't explode. <laughs> <laughs> so Dalton takes Sam Elliott to uh, pick up Kelly Lynch. Mm -hmm. They all go to a smaller bar to talk. Sam Elliott's explaining who he is and is showing some of his scars. He pulls his pants down to show a scar on his pelvis. This is the part of the movie where we get to see Sam Elliott's pubes for some reason. I don't think in any other movie that you'll get this opportunity. I don't think many people can realize they can find out what Sam Elliott's pubes look like. If you've ever looked at Sam Elliott and went, I wonder what his pubes are. Watch this movie. Watch this movie. You get to see them. <laughs> so, and it's a pretty gnarly scar, too. So then they both, then they all end up at like a diner where, where people dance or something. Where, yeah, they're dancing in this diner and like Sam Elliott's like really touchy feely. With his like, girlfriend. It's almost like, yeah, and he's like, he's like, maybe I want, I'm jealous and I want to be your boyfriend, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be like, oh, that's sweet. Yeah. He's such a no, nice he's guy. No, it's not sweet. He's like, <laughs> no, he's he he like grabs Kelly Lynch by the face, and he's like, your skin's like mighty soft. <laughs> like, Ugh. and you know, Patrick Swayze's just like, it's okay. 
It's okay. Well, I respect he's my him. friend. He's like I mean, what would I do? He's like my father figure, yeah. really. Yeah. So I can't really say anything to him. And they talk about how evil Ben Gazzara is, and like bad people just gotta be taken down, Berkadur. So uh, the next night at the Double Deuce, Red's Auto's body shop explodes, <laughs> which will be a feature to come in. <laughs> This is one of about three buildings that just blow up. <laughs> I mean, this place is like, it's got like thermite in it. <laughs> like, it just explodes. Uh, Red isn't dead, though, because he shows up in his car and he's like, that's my livelihood and whatnot. They go back inside the Double Deuce, where Ben Gazzara is trying to regain control of this place. So he has his girlfriend go up on stage and strip. This lasts for five minutes. We get to see her boobs a lot. <laughs> yeah, and I guess, what was the point, I guess? Why is she doing this? I don't know. So everybody could see how giant her panties are? They are a little big, aren't they? They're, but they're not even, like, they're not granny panties. No. They're not, like, like frumpy and, like, da- like down to her knees. They're, like, high. Like, <laughs> they cover... They're made... They're silk panties. So they're supposed to be, like, sexy panties. Yeah. But they come up to her belly button? <laughs> Like, why are they so high? Because it's the 80s, man. <laughs> Were panties really high then? Uh, I would guess so. Everyone's hair's up. Everyone's dresses are up. Panties are up, too. Everything's up. <laughs> it's just big. <laughs> At least we're not in the 90s where every woman looks like a triangle. Everybody looks like a triangle and has neon triangles on their clothes as well. <laughs> the 90s. Anyway, so, back to the movie. Sw- Swayze gets her down off the stage, and then Ben Gazzara shoots a gun. Wait, not yet. Then Ben Gazzara sends his number one henchman, yeah, the, who is the like a karate, guy. the Taekwondo guy, to fight Sam Elliott and Patrick Swayze. They fight. They're kind of losing against this guy. And then instead of letting the bad guy win, which is what I thought the point was, right. Ben Gazzara shoots a gun into the air and goes, all right, fight's over, let's all go home. Now, wait a second here. And they do. <laughs> now, first off, that, again, I love how they're all having a big party over at the bar, right across the street from where this place just blew up. Like, no, well, no it's one's, not a party Yeah, now. but like, it's like no one's getting asked questions or like anything like well, that. Well, because... What questions do they have? They know he did it. Ben Gazar is admitting he did. Now he's using a gun, his girlfriend's boobs, and this uh, Taekwondo master to regain control. Doesn't anyone nobody else have a gun? Any. Apparently not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because nobody shoots him. Well, until later. I do like. Uh, I do like that the the big the, the goon, the head goon, when he's like, "All right, I'm ready to fight." He's like, "I'm going to be a twirlathon master with this pool cue." <laughs> Yeah, he sort of batons it up a little bit like he's in charge of a parade. <laughs> exactly. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so next day, there was a meeting of all of the owners of all the businesses in town who said, we got to do something about West- Wesley, Ben Wesley, Ben Gazzara, I forget his character name. <laughs> Wesley? But something. We got to get him because he's such a bad guy. And they're like, well, what are we going to do about it? I don't know, blah, blah, blah. Cut to a car dealer where Ben Gazzara is trying to extort money from the car dealer, who refuses, so then Ben Gazzara's evil monster truck drives through this dude's car dealership. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, at what point are you like, okay, like... Call the fucking police! Yeah. Well, they keep saying the police are under his thumb. Then call the state police. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the next night, the uh, the house that the old man, not that, not the barn where Patrick Swayze is staying, the house that the old man lives in who's renting it is staying, that house catches on fire and explodes. Yeah, well, I think, and the girlfriend, I think, is um, trying to get the Patrick Swayze to leave. Yeah, he's trying to get him to leave. I don't know why they just don't blow the barn up and kill him then. Like, all they do are kill people around him <laughs> and blow up buildings that are tangentially related to him. All they had to like, do was kill him, and this is over. Just Yeah, just kill him. Why are we not just killing him? <laughs> so this is when he runs into this burning house, saves the old man. We see that he's in his old prospector PJs with the poop flap. <laughs> yeah, you he's love that, don't my, you? Got my giant onesie with my back door <laughs> in case I gotta take a poop at night. <laughs> We see that the number one, the Taekwondo master, is the guy who blew this house up. 
he starts to drive away on a motorcycle and has such a cartoonish laugh. Like, he rides the motorcycle in the frame, like, and he's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's like, wow, he's evil. If I was directing this movie, I'd be like, cut, all right, you got to tone that, bring that down to like a six, please. <laughs> and I love how Patrick Swayze chases him down on foot. <laughs> On foot because he's so fucking cool, dude. And he just tackles him off of this motorcycle. And then they just get into like an awesome karate fight. A ninja fight. They are just ninja fighting. That's it. While they're fighting and the Taekwondo guy has Swayze against the ropes. Wait, wait, can I please? I know what you're about to do and I really want to jump in and say this. (laughs) Please go ahead. So the bad guy has a little bit of an advantage over Patrick Swayze and he has the best line of the movie, which is, I used to fuck guys like you in prison. (laughs) I used to fuck guys like you in prison. If I was Patrick Swayze, I'd be like, oh shit, is this dude going to rape me? I mean, it was just like, it was so out of left field when I heard it. I was like, did he just say that? I used to fuck guys like you in prison. Every time I hear that line, I'm just, I'm still like, ew, gross. <laughs> just out of, like, what? And, and then I guess the threat of anal rape is enough to have Patrick Swayze go, well, I gotta win this fight. Yeah, and then, and, and you know, I love this. Now the bad guy pulls out a gun. The bad guy pulls out a gun. The first bad guy to be like, you know what? Fighting's hard. Why don't I just shoot him? Why not earlier? <laughs> he sees the gun, and then Patrick Swayze rips this guy's throat out. Which was Literally. badass. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, he takes rips his slams. throat out. And I love, and then his girlfriend comes along, and she's mad at him. <laughs> She's like, I can't believe you killed that guy, and he's all torn because he didn't want to take a life again, and now he did. Instead of like, bitch, he blew up the house and he had a gun? What the fuck you want me to do? Also, by the way, he threatened to rape me. I don't know if you heard that part. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm sorry. I killed the guy. (laughs) I had to, see? (laughs) And then she's like, well, I'm breaking up with you because for some reason that's not a good enough explanation for me. Oh <laughs> and now and now he's like in a blood rage. Patrick Swayze just looks across the river at Ben Gazzara, who is on the porch watching this. And he's just like, <laughs> and he throws this guy's dead body in the river. And, and what does he say? Does he say, like, go fuck yourself or something or fuck something you? Something like yeah. that. It's not quite as good as I used to fuck guys like you in prison. <laughs> What's that line? Like, you sort of blew your load on every line after that. Yeah, I mean, that was, yeah, that stole the show for me. Because it was so out of left field. You're just like, what happened? <laughs> I get it's an action movie and people curse and they, you know, and stuff like that. But then that line just comes out. You're like, what did he just say? <laughs> We've not been building to this kind of character at all. Oh, man. So well, his laugh goes... was very evil. So, well, that is true. So he goes to the double deuce and on the phone, Ben Gazzara calls him and says, well, I'm either going to kill Sam Elliott or Kelly Lynch. You decide. And he's like, I'm not going to do. You're a terrible, evil man. He's like, OK, I'll flip a coin. So he flips a coin and he's like, well, I'll, you'll, get, you'll see how it ends. And he just sits in the bar and waits. Like, why don't we all gather together? That way no one can get killed. The the second somebody's like, I'm going to go kill one of two people, go get those two people, dude. (laughs) And come come to have it, one of them walks in. One of them walks in. Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott. He's beat the shit. He's like a bunch of guys ganged up on me and like sucker punch me. And he's like, okay, that means they didn't, they're not going to kill you. I got to go save Kelly Lynch. He goes to the hospital to save Kelly Lynch, where Kelly Lynch is still like, I can't believe you killed that guy who was trying to kill you and rape you and blew up an old man's house. He's, How dare you? He's like, I'm still I'm holding a grudge. Okay. <laughs> so he's, he's just like, whatever, leaves to go back to Sam Elliott because I guess he's not worried that either of them are going to die. And then he finds Sam Elliott's dead. Oh, no. Yeah, you know, if you the wouldn't cool- have left him there like an idiot, then, um, you know. The, the the coolness factor of this movie just got cut in half. <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he's like, there's this really like weird emotional scene where he's like crying while he's pulling the knife out of yeah. Sam Elliott. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't pull it out. It's a murder. Call the police. Yeah, exactly. You don't need to take right. this into your own hands. That you know. Right. Also, he's dead. Pulling the knife out's not going to do anything at this point. <laughs> well, I think he wants to use it in his revenge. He doesn't, though. Well, kind of. Kind of. Yeah. But if you're going to pull that knife out and there's going to be this scene, that's the knife that kills Ben Gazzara. 
Yeah, it's true. Yeah, exactly. But that doesn't happen. No, so instead, he takes the knife, he jams it on the gas pedal of a car, and runs it into Ben Gazzara's house. Everybody is waiting there with shotguns, because I guess they assumed that he was coming. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously he was. I mean, it doesn't take a freaking genius to figure that out. No, so he sneaks in, and now we have the last act of this movie, which is just him sneaking through this house, shooting people with shotguns, and doing karate fights, and killing all of these henchmen. The yeah. comical fat guy on the bad guys team goes into Ben Gazzara's tro- animal trophy room because he thinks maybe uh, the Swayze is in there. He starts to get frightened by all of the taxidermy animals as if he's in a haunted house or something. <laughs> he's been here, like, that, I'm sure, and I'm sure he's been here like a lot. All of a sudden... He lives... He must, like you yeah. said, he must live in this house. Yeah, why all of a sudden are we scared of the bear or right, the deer or whatever? There's a giant stuffed polar bear... And it starts to move towards him, and he just goes, and shoots at it. And starts shooting at it as if he thinks this bear is alive now. Then it falls on him, and he faints because he's a comical fat guy. (laughs) And then it turns out Dalton was pushing the polar bear. Of course. Okay, let's let's take a brief minute and talk about... All of the animals in this trophy room. A good thing you were looking, because I wasn't. How could you not? They just, there are parts of this scene that just focus on the family of lemurs this guy apparently killed. (laughs) Okay. Like, there's one shot, there's a part at the end where all the people are in there, and they, like, go to everybody's face for a reaction shot, you know? Where they go to Patrick Swayze's face, they go to Kelly Lynch's face, they go to the mayor's face, they go to the cop's face. They flash to the lemurs in case we wanted to know what they were thinking about the situation. Well, they were in on the revenge, too, maybe. Well, then, since you weren't looking, let me tell you what's in this place. It's a polar bear, a family of lemurs, a giraffe... About a dozen moose, a hyena, a zebra, a bison. So Ben Gazzara funded what appears to be dozens of African hunting trips with the money he extorted from what? An auto body shop, a bar, and a car dealership? <laughs> oh, and the J.C. Penny and Sears. This is, I seriously doubt he's extorting a J.C. Penny. You never know. I don't, you can't extort change. Yeah, maybe he just bought them, though. Maybe he didn't do these hunting trips. Maybe he was just... He doesn't. He says it's his trophy Well, room. saying is one thing. Of course, there's a lot of people that claim that their trophies are theirs when they just bought them. I think it's more funny to think that this guy was like, all right, time to play on a trip where I'm going to kill a bunch of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ben Gazzara shows up. He is literally the only guy left in this house alive. I don't understand ben... why he doesn't, you know, run. Or just, I, hey, I don't know. Now it's personal. Man. Or give up. Now like, hey, personal. okay, you got me at this point. Dude. Ben Gazar is not going to give up because he's so damn evil. <laughs> so now they have a one-on-one fight. Ben Gazzara shoots Patrick Swayze in the arm. Finally, somebody shoots him. <laughs> and so now Patrick Swayze is shot and tired. So he's this old man sort of kicking his ass. He picks up a couple spears, and Ben Gazzara is, like, whipping him with these spears. <laughs> he, and, and Swayze takes his knee out. Right. And now they're both on the ropes. Ben Gazzara reaches for his other gun he had. I don't know why we didn't just grab that (laughs) right away. And as he's about to shoot Patrick Swayze, the entire town shows up with with (laughs) shotguns. And they shoot this dude like 25 times. Very satisfying. Like, there's not even a body left to identify. (laughs) It's just a bunch of meat on the ground. (laughs) They did shoot him quite a bit. And the police show up for the first time in the entire movie. And they're like, and, and basically, they're everyone's like, oh, I didn't see anything. And they're like, okay, well, well. And then the fat guy comes out from underneath the polar bear, and they're like, do you see anything, Tubby? And he's like, uh, I don't know, no, no. <laughs> and they're like, ah, ha, ha, he, we just killed a guy. Ah, and they all laugh it off. Yeah, and, and the police are like, oh, well, I guess that's what it is. I would have been like, hey, where were you, by the way, when three fucking houses exploded? <laughs> Guess what? Next election season, you ain't the sheriff no more. <laughs> That's pretty much the end of the movie, too. Yeah, and then him and Kelly Lynch, I guess, I guess he lives in this town now, question I mark? I don't know. <laughs> then, hey, the uh, double deuce is fixed, though. That's the double important. deuce is fixed, and Jeff Healy takes us out on some blues music. <laughs> So, yeah. 
<laughs> Sorry I couldn't get hosting all the way through that, but hey, I did a pretty hey, good that's job. Fun. You know what? You did do a good job for as long as you held in there. Yeah. I will I just... Hey, a lot of anxiety. You know, it was welling up inside me. I said, well, don't want that. Push it off on somebody else, and hey, you took it away. <laughs> Going to push that down all the way to my feet yep. and ignore my feelings. Yep. Yeah, I'll get back to that in 40 years. <laughs> so, so yeah, our, ratings, our rating system is, of course, I didn't hate it. It's a good party movie. It's a good hangover movie, or I hated it. Yeah. I'll go first. I'll go for it. I so didn't hate this movie. This is a fantastic movie. This fills three categories. I didn't hate it. This is a good party movie, and it's a good hangover movie. This is a movie for any situation. You have a wedding? Throw this up on the wall in the back of your wedding. This movie covers all the bases. Patrick Swayze is awesome. His hair is awesome. Sam Elliott's great. We got boobs. We got guys' butts. We got guys' pubes. We got guys' dicks. We got murder with guns. We got rip and throw down. We have threat of male rape? Question <laughs> mark. We got a guy wearing pajamas with a poop flap. <laughs> it... <laughs> Are you all right up there? I just choked. Well, that's okay. Good. So you didn't hate it. <laughs> Yeah, more or less. Okay. Well, I want to go. To, you know what? I'm going to. You know what? To hell with our rating system. I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb here, and I don't care what you say, Reverend Zach. I loved the movie. Oh. Yeah. So it's a great movie. There's no reason I should have even uh, suggested this one. This movie is not a hot dog in any way. Uh, it's a good movie. It's a great classic '80s film classic action film it's got comedy in it badass actors and actresses it's awesome go watch it right now yeah it's a great movie yep i think you can stream this and buy it on just about anything i think it's made available in every single form of media because everybody needs to see this yeah so absolutely check it out we both recommend it <laughs> now i have an announcement to make. oh i'm surprised go for it some people already know this because I posted it yesterday, and that'll be like two to three weeks after by the time this comes out. But the YouTube page is up and running and has every single episode on it. And from now on, every time a new episode is uploaded to iTunes and Podomatic, it will also be uploaded to YouTube in case anybody wants to stream it from there. So now go there, subscribe, write comments, do whatever you want to do, or don't. Ignore it. I really don't care. And uh, so there's an option for easier listening. Yeah, great. That's awesome. Thank you for all the hard work, uh, Reverend Zach. Yeah, it took really fucking long to get all those episodes up there. That's a real pain in the ass to do 45 of those in a row. <laughs> do we have that many episodes now? I think this is 46 47? something. Yeah, like we're somewhere in there. Yeah, somewhere the we got to do something for fifty. I have right? an, I have a couple ideas, but if you oh yeah, really you, you want to run them by me? Uh, yeah, uh, I was thinking maybe Buckaroo Banzai. Oh my god! If we could find it, I think we'll have to pay for. I it. own it. Well, I don't. That's not my problem. <laughs> wow. Okay. Be a big jerk about <laughs> no, it. Whatever. I don't know. I've no, been. that's fine. I'll I'll find. I don't mind. I don't mind. Paying three bucks to rent. Yeah, buttons. Amazon Prime has it, so I'm sure I'm sure I can find it in other places too. Yes, that's fine. Fiftieth episode, you heard it here. Buckaroo Banzai. Uh, the adve actually the Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai across the eighth dimension. Yeah, and you got to watch out. Uh, that sequel is supposed to come out soon. We'll go over that when we do the episode. Is where you wear your hat. <laughs> Anyways, so um, that's all I got. You got anything else? Uh, yeah, you want to send us any questions, comments, concerns, or hate mail, you can send that to us at moviehotdog at gmail.com. We have a Twitter, which I never use, but I'll keep saying this. It's at moviehotdog. Oh, the YouTube channel. It's uh, it's called Zach Hot Dog, Z-A-C-H space H-O-T-D-O-G. Uh, there's a link on the uh, Facebook page. I'll put a link in the description of this episode. And, I mean, just if you want to find it, just fucking find it. Um <laughs> Follow us on, like us on Facebook uh, at This Movie Was a Hot Dog. You can send us messages there if you have any recommendations for movies. You can comment on shit. Do whatever you want. Or don't. I don't care. Uh, we have a, oh, please rate and review and subscribe to us on iTunes or Podomatic because that really helps the show get seen. I am done talking now. Yeah, well, for Reverend Zach, this is Frank just saying this movie was definitely not a hot dog.